This is what did not make the cut as our top story. Or this is... Well, this didn't make the cut as our top story. What's that, Eric? That's your column. <laughs> it's true. It didn't make the cut as our top story, but it's the second story in the show. I made the cut one of one of the top stories in the newspaper. He's on the bottom half of the bottom fold. You did well, and you, you wrote a very good column today. Oh, thanks, Eric. And it was about how Kubiak is bringing in a lot of his... Former guys. Yeah. You must have heard me on the radio talking about that. That's I don't what you got that idea from. Oh. Did you say that really? <laughs> yeah, I was doing the original idea. Uh, That's funny you should say that because when you are on the radio, I sit in my car and take notes. Ah. Uh, because so I want to know how to stack uh, this show. Oh. All right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of funny. It's just every day we get these emails. Oh, the Broncos have signed some dude that used to be on a Kubiak team. Right. Offense, defense, doesn't matter. These guys are showing up. So I made some jokes in there that, like, you know, he's just bringing in anyone he trusts. I mean, anyone he trusts, he's got to bring in. You know, his favorite chef from Chili's or the, the kid down the street that <laughs> mows his lawn. You know, he's going to be the groundskeeper. Right. You know, anybody he trusts. And, uh, but the reality is, and then Chad can speak, this is, happens in the NFL a lot, especially with first-year coaches on a team. It doesn't guarantee anything except that the dudes on the roster, or at least these dudes, know the playbook. Yes. This is standard NFL procedure for first-year coaches to bring guys from their previous stops because those guys know what they're looking for in the locker room. Yeah. They know what to expect from the playbook. NFL coaches hate the unknown. Right. So you got 53 guys on the roster, well, the final roster, and you like to know about it as much as you can about all those guys. Yeah. So you start bringing in guys that you already know. So that reduces your list of unknowns. It's, yeah. a, it's a simple thing. But it also works on the other side within the locker room. Okay. Because it's in the middle of training camp. And I know training camps are softer now than they ever were. But in the dog days of training camps, you can go to a guy who was with, previously with Gary and say, man, it's been a tough, tough, tough couple of practices. Yeah. What's next? Yeah. Oh, this is that time of training camp where Gary's going to have one more tough scrimmage. And now uh, we're going to yeah. lighten the load a little bit. Gotcha. Uh, and so... He can; he, those guys can act as liaisons in the locker yeah. room to kind of communicate Gary's message and what Gary's style is about. But also from a yeah. coaching perspective, there's a great comfort because they know those guys so well. Is so. it unfair to say then it is less about talent? That is not unfair. That would be exactly fair because I just said how talents towards the not towards the bottom, but right. probably number three. These guys come in; they have great football character. He knows what they're about. They're not great players, right. but great football character. They know what they're going to get from these guys. You made a good point, and I've been uh, crediting you, and, and yeah. saying it when I do radio. In town. What were you saying the other day about how uh, we're talking about Julius Thomas, he might be a nine one day, yeah. but then he's like a two the next day. You just don't... But but you talk about a solid player. He might just be, just be a seven. That's good. But you know you're getting seven every day, whether it's Monday or Sunday, or if you will, and, and you said that, and I thought that was a great point. It is, and it's, it's true, though, because if you have a guy who's a seven, and you're a good enough coach, you can put that guy in spots where he can be successful as a seven. Maximize a seven. But if you're a nine and sometimes you're a two and it's a third and ten situation, we want to throw the ball to you. Are you right. going to be a nine right now or are you going to be a two? We yeah, can't rely yeah, on that. Yeah. I can rely on the guy who's a seven because right. I can put him in a position where he can be successful. Yeah. If you'd like to know, I've quoted you too, your ability versus durability. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. Because we had that conversation about Troy Tulowitzki. Uh -huh. And I've, I've quoted Chad too, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> I was in the pool! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can we move on now? <laughs> it was a good column. I thought that was pretty good. It was a good column. <laughs> Not, that good. That Not that we need to spend any more time on it. It was a good column. Yes. And now it's well time done. to move on.